Now, just to be clear, what's going to follow is not in any way a question about President Trump. But Trump, Good. Thank you. <laughs> Trump is a, a kind of data, right? So he is not in every way a traditional religious conservative, it would be fair to say. Really? <laughs> and given that the Republican Party uh, el elected Trump as their candidate, and he then has become president, what should this cause us to rethink about the role of religion in the rise of the right over the last 20 to 30 years? Does that new data in any way revise previous theses about whether it's Reaganomics or religion or counter-reaction to the 1960s? Or do you see what I'm asking? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> a, a bit. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know that there's any way we could do justice to a question that big in under a couple of hours, but maybe just a few big glosses. Um, I think that both of these political parties are almost completely intellectually exhausted. I don't think either party can articulate a vision for America that's five or 10 years future looking right now. So when you ask the American people, do you identify more with the Republican Party or the Democratic Party? And if you don't give them the option to say none of the above, 46% of people still interrupt to say none of the above. That's stunning, right? So basically they're 29% Democrat leaning, 25% Republican leaning, and 46% refuse to answer your question. Um, if you're of the party of Lincoln, as I am, that's really scary because our 25% are lots and lots older than the Democrats, 29%. Um, and then when you ask, you drill down on the 54% who are willing to answer, and you say, and why are you a Republican? Why are you a Democrat? Something like 70% of the people begin by talking about why the other party is so much worse than your party, <laughs> right? So the, these parties don't know what they stand for, and they surely can't communicate it, and they definitely can't communicate it in a constructive, positive, winsome way. And so that's the starting point for the election cycle of 2016. And so I think both parties were ripe for a hostile takeover. And if you think about 17 candidates in the Republican primary, you went a long way into that cycle before the president, now president's um, numbers ever got anywhere near 40%. And at that same point, um, Bernie Sanders is getting 45% of the Democratic vote, and he's not a Democrat, right? So both parties were very ripe for hostile takeover. And then I think you have to understand some of what happened in the 2016 cycle uh, on the Republican side as partly legacy of a 2012 moment where Mitt Romney had difficulty closing the deal because of the way Ron Paul was able to stick around. And so the party changed a bunch of the rules so there would be easier consolidation. Why, why do I say all that? Um, I say that because I think that you have to understand the 2016 primary as one thing on the Republican side. And the Republican Party is too vacuous of what we stand for right now. Um, and so it was ripe for a hostile takeover. That happened. And then you ended up with what was perceived as a binary choice for a lot of voters between two candidates that were not viewed as very trustworthy. And so then you end up with a general election choice that is not a big vision choice. And so I don't know how you would go the next level down and talk in great detail about you know, what the religious components were to a political ideology, because I don't think we made a choice about ideology in the 2016 cycle. I think we sort of made a choice that was about a lot of folks saying, burn the place down and let's just see what happens, because I don't like the direction we're headed now. 